74. And the spotlight is on these Chiefs superstar cornerback, who's had quarterbacks numbers all season, coming down with seven picks. It's the Chiefs and the Vikings coming up next. U.S. Bank Stadium holds just under 70,000 spectators, and they've come out in full force for this one. A fantastic atmosphere here in Minneapolis. Today, we've got a Week 5 matchup in store here, as it'll be the defending Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, taking on the Minnesota Vikings. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team... The first quarter of the season already in the rearview mirror, and off we go in week five on EA Sports. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. And he's playing at a very high level here in this early part of the season, in fact, he leads the NFL in passing yards. Now, that's not always an indicator of success, but in his case, it is. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He finds his man complete. That's Mullis. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Throw left side, complete to Moss. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll drop to throw. That's going to be caught by Moss. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A very solid gain of 27. This is what you want to see from your rookie quarterback on an opening drive, Charles. He looks cool, he looks calm, he looks collected in marching them down the field. And Brandon, I just think the game continues to change and evolve because we're calling these guys rookies. But you know, they've thrown the football so much at a younger level now, way more so than what we saw when guys came into the league when you and I came through. And also just the way in particular to him, Charles, how he handles himself in meetings. Just so professional, mature. Looks like he's been in the league five years. Yeah, he cares about the game. He cares about his performance, and it's showing. Back to throw again. That is incomplete. No surprise at all. They're looking for the good man early in this one. The only surprise for them, he couldn't hang on to the pass. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he's going to go down. He sank back in the 24. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. But it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And his kick is indeed good. And the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. I think we can safely say they came out to be aggressive on the opening series, Charles. They didn't run the ball once. All that passing, it does get them the 3-0 lead. I think what we saw there, partner, was the true definition of football balance, which means doing what you want to when you want to on offense. And in this case, it was throwing the football. They may mix in running the football a little bit more as this game goes on. But his opening drive, while it stalled out, it still gave them three points. So here are the Chiefs now under their veteran head coach, Andy Reid. And they will be led out by their 6'3 cornerback. His ability to adjust on the fly is almost unmatched in the game right now because it leads to a couple of snaps per game where you just sit back and ask yourself, how did he pull that off? 
opponents can practice and prepare each and every week all they want. But this guy, he is hard to corral. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Again from the 20 after the incompletion. Here's second and 10. He'll look to throw. He's got this to the rookie, Rasheed Rice. A big play there for KC. 44 yards. That's evidence of why you spend a high draft pick on a receiver, isn't it, Charles? It certainly is. His ability to make plays like that, and we've seen flashes of it from him so far in his rookie season. But also, it opens things up for the rest of the offense because they have to bring their attention to him as well. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. They'll set up a throw. That's complete. It's Travis Kelsey. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. They said there was a lot of discussion in their defensive team meeting room after last week's performance. They had seven sacks. Something in the water. There's one in the first quarter. A lot of discussion, a lot of excitement because now everyone wants to get involved with this. Who's going to continue that process? Who's going to get to the quarterback this week? But they have to be careful. When you have that much pressure, they want to use it against you. Draws, screens, those types of plays. We'll see if they do that. Now here's a throw. It's complete. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. Not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They'll set up the screen to Pacheco. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Now Harrison Bunker for the field goal try. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. Bunker's kick here is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So matching field goals on our opening two drives. Yeah, it feels like two boxers feeling each other out here in the early going of the game, right? Exchanging some jabs, but none of the heavy stuff just yet. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. But the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. The numbers for him from a week ago, 25 carries, 108 yards. How about the first month of the season for him? He leads the league in rushing, so he knows confidence is at an all-time high, which means his offensive line loves it, too. They'll get more opportunities to run block for him. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. They'll set up to throw. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he will have the Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And the Vikings are the perfect 4-0 to start the campaign. And they've been playing their best football of the year. Winners of four in a row. And let's remember the last week that this offense, they played about as well as they possibly could play. Touchdown after touchdown. They were absolutely unstoppable in that game. They'll be hard-pressed to do it again, repeat that type of performance. But boy, were they sensational just a week ago. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. This running game is so important for them, and they know that. It helped lead them to a victory last week when he was over 100 yards. Let's face it, it's their identity, and that's what they want to play to. They want to be that team that runs the ball really well each and every week, and right now we're seeing a pretty good pattern of that happening. From the 46, here's the second down and four. 
Now a handoff running through the middle. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. You talk about this Chiefs defense. Against the pass, they're hoping to trend in the opposite direction because right now they're ranked number 26 in the NFL. And it's really difficult to prepare for this team. This is the number one overall passing team in the NFL, but it shouldn't be hard to get excited about playing against them. The ultimate test going against that unit. And that's why you and I are excited to broadcast this game. Yes, sir. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. here as they fail to connect on third. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright. And in this first quarter of play, this will remain a tie ball game. Yeah, 55 yards is anything but a gimme. You've got to really concentrate on your leg swing and proper technique. This time, though, he's unable to convert. Kansas City taking the field for their second drive. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I like the way we can even describe it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. One thing that you're going to see from this offense is that they love the matchup with their wide receivers against this secondary. That one wasn't successful, but don't expect them to back away from attacking all game long. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Chiefs first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So, Charles, yeah, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league. But I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with that's going to confuse, disguise a lot of coverage, make this kid think a little bit because in college he's seen a lot of things let's, let's not get it wrong here but at the same time in the nfl you can do so much more because of the athletes you have because of their football iq and don't forget you're gonna throw a couple extra rushers at him as well see if he can handle the pressure when those guys come at him over the middle he finds higgins and he's gonna get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard Second and one. And throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Well, you know you don't want to make a mistake in that area, so you make sure you make a smart throw. Throw it out towards the sidelines. If you overshoot your guy, so be it. It's just the incompletion that we saw there. Out of the gun now on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Had a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Now second and five. Snap will come from the six. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. The false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. They'll look to throw again. A dump down to McKinnon. So they'll get nothing out of that play. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. Right where they set him down started. They need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Now the pressure. 
Fisher gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 and the 19. A nightmare on third and goal. He sacked, and multiple players broke through the line to get him. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Butker's kick here is good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Partner on my spot sheets, I highlighted turnover margin because we, we remember they turned it over four times last week. So another one here in the first quarter. This isn't the way they want to go. No, not even close. And, and it's not something they even imagine because the amount of time that we know that they spend in practice talking about what they need to get done, working on it, showing them how to take. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Back to throw now on first down. That is incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Now a throw here, hauled in. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Six three is our score after one. It's the NFL on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. They'll look to throw. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. So a good snap, good hold, and right down the middle. Never in doubt, just the way you used to hit him, Harden. You mean like uh, kicking the ball? Exactly. Well, that was in high school. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't care what level. You hit them, they go through. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Now the Chiefs offense, they get ready to head on the field. Now a play fake here on first down. He's taken down. Back at his own seven. It looks like a loss of right around 11 there on first down to set him back on second. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. 
Now a throw for the All-Pro. Kelsey is complete. And they work this out past the 25. A gain there of 21 yards. And they were backed up to start the drive, but not anymore. Now that's the play call that the offensive coordinator had in his head. You saw the end result. He wanted to go ahead and push the ball downfield, and that's what they did. And they wound up with good yardage there to get things rolling. The All-Pro Micah Parsons there on the tackle. Here's a second and seven. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. The Chiefs on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and seven. He'll drop to throw. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Micah Parsons able to record his fifth sack of the season. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has not received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Fourth down, so Kansas City sends out Tommy Townsend. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. And taken right at the 35. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try to get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe someday I'll press it a little bit. This might be the case. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Throwing right, and that's complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A few moving pieces on that play, because that was an RPO, was it not? It was, but one important piece that didn't move incorrectly, the offensive line. Because when you're running this play, as he continued down the line of scrimmage, sometimes the lineman could wander downfield. If you're more than a yard downfield, it's illegal to throw the football at that point. But they held their ground, held their spot, and turned it into a nice game. They'll stick with the passing game as he makes the throw. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. A great effort there. His second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Vikings have taken the lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's got Higgins over the middle. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. From the 25, here's second and six. A give right side for Pacheco. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, 
you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Play smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll bring up second down. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. Seven yards there and a first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. To about the 40-yard line. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs 43. A nice pickup of 17 yards. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple at its second down. They're going to look to throw. The throw right side here going to be incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 30. A solid gain of 15 yards, and the sticks move. So first and 10 now from the 30. Again, he'll drop to throw. That's going to be caught by Moss. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And he's over 100 yards now after that last catch. Already, of course, leading the NFL in receiving yardage. So he's done nothing at all to hurt his cause to stay in that spot. But I've been so impressed with how he's gotten it done. Body control, route running. How about the way he competes for the football at the end of the play? Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Moss. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he will score! Touchdown, Vikings! A great play there! His second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Vikings go up by two touchdowns. Well, fair to say, they've got something here, this rookie running back, and he's in for the second time in the ball game. And Brandon, it's a position where there's often a lot of turnover, a lot of competition at that spot. But he's proven to them that he wants to be the bell cow guy that his franchise can rely on. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. The KC offense out of the huddle, ready for their next drive. 
And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to pump then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And this offense on third down today, they've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and eight. That is caught, and he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Rookie to rookie on the hook up there, and it's a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On first and 10, here's Pacheco. And somehow he's going to get a yard out of this as he fought through that first contact. It's second down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. But he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. Second and nine now. Pitch and catch here to Travis Kelsey. They'll give him four yards there, and it brings up third and five now. They'll look to throw here. And that is incomplete. Well, this first half is not going according to plan so far offensively, or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to pump this one away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And the football going back to the Vikings offense. They have been red hot, sometimes white hot here in this first half. They're just looking to add to that total right now. And this has to serve as a reminder to myself because so many times I get wrapped up in the play calling, how they've sequenced things, how it's run. But you know, at the end of the day, it's still execution. Those guys out on the field, and right now they are locked in and really looking good. They try to continue to be locked in here as we get ready to approach halftime. They'll look to throw now on first down. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, he's been the guy already over 100 yards here in the first half. Could have had a lot more if he would have been able to haul that one in. Yeah, in fact, our statistician Marvin was already handing me a piece of paper with that yardage totaled on it. He thought that catch was going to happen just as you and I did as well. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Back to throw again. They open, it's Moss complete. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. First down, he'll drop to throw. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Now a second and ten. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Chiefs going to go back on offense here late in this first half. 
Well, not much time remains here in this first half. We'll see if they can get something out of this drive, at least a field goal. They could certainly use it down by two scores. He'll get this one to Kelsey. That's complete. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. He'll look to throw. That's complete to his receiver, McLaurin. The Chiefs now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Yeah, he's certainly not a guy that drops off football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you two in just a bit. But first, let's get everybody caught up with what's going on around the NFL here in week five. We'll get started up at FedEx Field in our nation's capital, where it was the visiting Bears who come in and get the victory on the road. Josh Allen, sharp in the victory, as his guys bounce back from a tough start to the year to claim victory number one. Next, we head off to check out another game. And you can see, currently they trail in that ball game. Richie James, a touchdown reception. Lastly, let's motor up to the Motor City. See what's happening with the Lions at home at Ford Field. And it was the visiting Carolina Panthers who were victorious in that one. Bryce Young, four touchdown passes in the victory. Super Bowl champs trailing here, but they will get the ball first to begin quarter number three. To return, it's McKinnon. And he returns this to the 22. The Chiefs ready to go on offense to begin quarter number three. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. into the reliable hands of Kelsey. He's still on his feet. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Travis Kelsey, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Chiefs come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. This fielded right at the goal line. 
And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. Second and nine now from the 21. Back to throw. And he's got this to Jefferson. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 22 yards there, a first down. Charles, to move the chains that time, they had to complete it in a double coverage, and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one-on-two matchup. Back to throw now on first down. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Two yards to go, second down. On play action, they'll throw. This one caught, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A gain there of 21 yards. Now a play fake here on first down. And they're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So the ball's moved to about the one after the penalty, first and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. From back at the four, here's second and goal. And they'll run again. But he will go backwards as he stopped for a loss. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. They'll drop to throw. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. Touchdown! A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are able to extend their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab jab and finally the haymaker to put that drive away point after right down the middle and the lead now up to 14. minnesota's kick team ready and the vikings move it away and they'll start at the 25 as mckinnon decides against returning it and the chiefs offense ready to go again they did what they had to do to start this third quarter. Went down, got the touchdown to cut the lead, but the matching touchdown a moment ago, and we're right back where we started at halftime. Yeah, you're exactly right, partner. They had a little bounce in their step after scoring that first touchdown, but the defense gave one up, and that's the problem right now. Can they get better play from their defense while they continue to score on offense? So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Back to throw here. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield, Jr. And he'll return it to the 24-yard line. When the rookie QB gets his first touchdown pass, that's one you put in the trophy case. First career interception, that's going to be one he wants to forget. Yeah, and he's not going to go ask for the football, right? Yeah, you can keep that one. The key for him, what does he learn from it? When he watches the tape, does he have an answer right now where he already understands what mistake he made? That's what the coaches are going to want to know, and that's what they'll grill him on and see how he grows from it. 
They go play action here on first down. Finds his tight end Oliver here outright. They'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. He'll look to throw. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. He'll drop to throw. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And the Chiefs are going to get the football back at their own 17. That pick hurts a little extra because it was third down. You were already in field goal range. You know what he's going to hear all night, all next week? Situational football. Understand what's going on because you expressed it perfectly. Three points were in their hip pocket. They had those. Now those went by the wayside. You cannot make those kind of mistakes. It's what you call a rookie mistake. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it'll be second down. They'll set up to throw. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 27 yards there, a first down. They'll look to throw. They'll check this one down to Pacheco. And he's taken down at the 50 after a short gain of two. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's the second and eight. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Again, he'll drop to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 37. That'll put him up over 160 yards receiving now for the game. They can't seem to stop it. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. Headed straight. It's Pacheco. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Second and five. That's into the hands of Fordson. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third down, it's Pacheco. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. They'll look to throw here on first down. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Take him down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. It has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What walking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. That ball caught, it's Rice. A big gain there after going backwards, and that'll lead to a third down. Here is third down and four.
They're going to look to throw. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he's going to be a yard short. Needed four, but got three. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. They'll run for it with Pacheco. And he's going to bump his way into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Isaiah Pacheco taking it in from seven yards away. And the Chiefs' decision to go for it pays off with six points. So they only needed a couple of feet there on fourth down, but they got more than that and then some as he takes this into the end zone. And I love your description right there, right? Fourth and short. They got that, no problem. Let's go ahead and get the rest of it. Finish it off in the end zone, touchdown. Everyone goes away happy on that one. Extra point by Butker is on target. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. Here's the Chiefs kickoff unit now as they'll send this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And now out comes Minnesota. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. That's going to be caught by Moss. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 29 yards that time. Well, there's your leading receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage, putting on another clinic well over 100 yards. Are we taking notes? We should be, right? Because I'm going to go back and watch this tape and really enjoy what I'm seeing. The route running, competing for the football, just breaking down a defense. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. Down to about the 45. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 65 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Those are the types of runs they told us they want to see more of. Look, they'd love the 60 to 70 yard runs, but those 10 to 20 yarders, they can help you win a ball game. And that means everyone's invested because you know the big guys up front. That's what they do. They try and move people. But when you get your perimeter guys involved downfield, that means that they care about the running game and they know it helps their team. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. Now second and three. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. And down inside the 15 he goes. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. They'll look to throw here. Throwing it a traffic there, and that's complete. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Looking to throw. Touchdown, Vikings! A great effort there with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings are well on their way to a 5-0 start as they extend their lead. So on this drive, the rookie leads him into the end zone, Charles, and that helps cancel out the points that were created on the previous drive when he threw the interception. Yeah, let's give some credit to this rookie because instead of hanging his head after his mistake leads to a touchdown, he comes back out and he's firing and made up for it right there. A well-executed series helps reestablish some confidence in him to run this offense. Minnesota's kick team ready and the Vikings boom it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. 
The Chiefs ready to rock again on offense. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Give him big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. The throw over the middle taken in. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. They run it with Pacheco from the gun. And he will have a Chiefs first down. At least it would appear that way. He didn't get it by much, but yes, they do get the conversion on third and one. They'll set up a throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Back to throw. That's complete to his receiver, McLaurin. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. He'll look to throw. They're looking for Higgins, but it is intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. Third and long that time, he was trying to make something happen, but a little too risky. Well, the field tilted on him, and what I mean by that is what you said. Third and long, got to push it down field to try to pick up the first down. Defensive backs live for this situation, and they took advantage of the young man right there. The Vikings head out to take over once again. They have to like the position that they are in. Fourth quarter, two-score lead, and now the ball back after the INT. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Here's second and seven. Now back to throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. Back to throw again. That's complete right around the eight. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. The Vikings on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. They sure went against conventional wisdom, calling a pass on third and inches. Had to be thinking to themselves, the defense is going to overcommit against the run. Should be an easy pitch and catch. Didn't turn out that way. They'll look to throw again. And it is caught. Touchdown! Justin Jefferson from eight yards out. And the Vikings add on to their lead, and they are also closing in on a fifth straight victory. He has really settled in throwing the football, and that touchdown here in the fourth quarter gives him a pretty comfortable cushion. He may be a rookie, but he's playing like fourth quarter, and the QBing is easy. How about this guy? Youngster, not worried about anything, just cutting it loose and having fun. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. 
And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Finding room at midfield. And he's going to get this into enemy territory at the 45. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 45-yard line. He'll drop to throw. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Vikings are in great shape here as they take over at their 46-yard line. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ballgame. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How'd things turn out for him? I think okay. He's a guy in all the commercials now, right? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. he's doing okay. They'll start on the ground here on first down. To about the 48-yard line. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, they're going to run for it here. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. So where did all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Now here's Ryan right now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. The Chiefs offense now making their way back onto the field. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, OK, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. They'll look to throw now on first down. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Micah Parsons able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Guys with his talent in the pocket aren't supposed to be getting hit like this, and you know an intense conversation with the offensive line is going to occur after this one. Might not be from him, but the offensive line coach will have plenty to say about this game. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. He'll look to throw. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Harrison Smith. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. A try here for the extra point. And 
And that'll increase their lead to 28. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And they'll start at the 25 as McKinnon decides against returning it. And now here comes Kansas City. And you can sort of sense their dejection. That last pick six put the icing on the cake, so to speak, in what has been a rough go for them. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Well, he leads the NFL in interceptions and nearly added to that total. Got his hand on it, couldn't quite corral it. It's been a Pro Bowl-type season for him, and the term ball hawk really comes into play, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that one a lot because teams want to avoid that type of a player, but sometimes you just can't. He just knows where the ball is. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Third and eight. They'll look to throw. Under pressure, and down he goes. Micah Parsons. Who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailed by multiple touchdowns and a late sack. Just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. A hit as he throws, and this is going to be incomplete. Andy Reid went for it, but it won't pan out. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. Oh, the lonely punter inside their own 20 figured for sure they were punting this away. They did not, and the move does not pay off. You think someone put up the stop signal when he started to trot over the <laughs> sideline? Nope, nope, no son. We're going to go for it here. Usually when you see a team do these types of things, it's because they're so dominant that they don't believe that they can get beat. This is much more of what you see in a high school game, maybe some of those mismatched college games. But in the NFL... Any given Sunday is a phrase they take seriously. And guess what? That was probably going to backfire. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. They'll set up to throw. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. So give him two yards there on the completion. And that's going to make it fourth down. Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And his kick here is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So the starting field position was terrific following the surprising turnover on downs, but the end result, only three points. Simply stated, I think you have to look at that as a missed opportunity. Jarek McKinnon to take it out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. KC's offense ready to take over. Well, CD, it's all window dressing at this point. I mean, the best they can do is end the game with a nice drive to maybe build some momentum to move forward into their next contest. Yeah, with how lopsided this game has been, even one score might not do a lot of cosmetic good on the scoreboard, partner, because it's just about looking forward at this point. Get a touchdown here, give yourself some positive momentum and reps to focus on when you get back to practice in the next couple of days. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. They'll drop to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that will be...
be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Again, he'll drop to throw. That to the right sideline. And it falls incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, but after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. This is taken at the 15. So a solid punt, but also a nice return there of 14 yards. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before we hit triple zeros. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is of all those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. So for Minnesota, they improved to 5-0 now on the young season. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Chicago Bears. Meanwhile, for Kansas City, the loss will move them back to 3-2 on the year. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.